800-450-7876 on line 9. We have Mark calling us from Anaheim. And this sounds like it's Mark from Anaheim. On line 9. Mr. Mr. Nelson? Yes, sir. It is Mark. Wow. And how are you today, sir? We're well so far. How are you? Hey, you know me. I just take one day at a time. I just sit back and watch the madness. There ain't nothing going on I haven't been telling you about for years. That's true. And people are asking me about you all the time. So I'm glad you called in because they, you know, they're really concerned about your welfare. What's going on with the virus? So, <laughs> yeah, you're laughing, but that's true. Uh, I'm fine, man. I don't drink. I ain't out there sleeping with a bunch of women. Dude, this, you know, there's a lot of suffering going on in this nation and worldwide. But seriously, I mean, for those who've been preparing for things that would come in the future, for a lot of us, this really hasn't had a significant impact on our lives. The only thing that's changed in my life is right now all my surf concerts have been canceled. I've been sheltered in place for since Obama got elected. Because once Obama got elected, white folks in this country lost their minds, so I stopped going out. So I know you got a break coming up, so if you want me to hold over until after the break, I'll do that. Back, back to the Carl Nelson Show. On Washington, D.C.'s 1450. 1450 WOL Radio. I'd like to stay with us, folks. It's an open phone Friday. This is how we start the weekends here at WOL. We give you a chance to free your mind. If you didn't get a chance to call in this week or previous weeks, well, now's the time to reach out to us. Our number is toll-free. It's also worldwide. It's 800-450-7876. We'll go back to Mark from Anaheim in a second. Let me just uh, tell you, coming up next week, you're going to hear from Master Herbalist, Dr. B. Also, Hollywood executive Tim Hutchison is going to join us. So if you're in the DMV, tell all your friends to keep their radios locked right here on 1450 WOL. So, Mark, I guess you're not surprised at what's going on because you've been telling us this for years that this is this, and the day's finally here. Yeah, well, um, <laughs> we all have to prepare. We live in a society, Mr. Nelson, where we're more reactionary instead of being in a, in a position of preventive. And what you see, at least what I see in this country right now, is a reactionary society. People are like, what happened? I'll give you a good example. Last year, I was at a surf contest down on Oceanside. I had these three surfers from France, okay, three females. And we're all staying at this motel, and they ordered out, you know, food. And I said, listen, I don't do delivery to my Hope motel room. If you guys want, I'll take you to a restaurant. But I'm not doing no damn bring me food back to my room. And they all looked at me like I'm crazy because, you know, they're all, I'm old enough to be all of, their, you know, all of them. I could have been their grandfather. And they're from Europe, white girls. So, you know, that's how they live. Less than 24 hours later, National Public Radio published a survey stating that more than 30% of the people in their survey who deliver food said they mess with your food. Now, we're living in this so-called sheltered in place pretty much except for, I think, like eight states right now. And the vast majority of people, Mr. Nelson, are getting their food delivered to them. When you've already had a survey tell you last year that more than 30% of the people who deliver your food <laughs> mess with your food. This is the society we put ourselves into today. We're not self-sufficient. We don't prepare for unforeseen consequences. We live day by day, some of us minute by minute. And so when things happen, we panic. I used to tell LAPD cops, to me, panic meant police are not in control. Well, what you're seeing happen around this country right now, and I'm just going to keep it here in this country. People are not in control. They've allowed their control to be given away. It wasn't taken away. You give your control away. You give it to that damn Internet. You give it to the damn sporting. You give it to the online betting. And when all these things that don't mean a damn thing that's really important to your survival are taken away from you, you panic. And that's what you see going on right now, Mr. Nelson. And now that everybody's at home, the, the, the Internet system is overloaded. The Wi-Fi systems are overloaded. A lot of people can't even get their work done or stay in touch with relatives and family because we've gone to all this high-tech world that all it takes is for one satellite to get knocked out of the sky and cause a domino effect. So it's, it's, it's tough. 
I had a listener, Mr. Nelson, one of your listeners contacted me two days ago, and I don't remember saying this until he said it. But he said, well, you know, you told us this on Carl Nelson show five years ago, and you said you're going to be on some beach getting drunk and laughing, sitting back and laughing. Well, I want you listeners to know I was mistaken. I was mistaken because, one, I stopped drinking more than two years ago. And, two, I don't go to the beach. Because for, for you folks who are listening that near the beach, stay away from the damn beach while this is going on. Moisture in the air at the beach carries this further and longer than if you were away from the beach. So stay away from the beach while this is going on. And third, Mr. Nelson, I can't laugh at the, you know, the suffering of other people. So I'm glad that listener reminded me of having said that on your show, not because I wanted to be in a position where I was sitting back on the beach getting drunk and laughing, but the fact that, yeah, without coming on the show saying, I told you so, I told you so. (laughs) You know, seriously. And I just want to thank all the listeners out there who've taken the time to reach out to me to find out if I'm doing fine. I'm doing fine, man, other than watching other people suffer. I mean, Mr. Nelson, one of your listeners contacted me and he says, man, brother, nine of my friends have died so far. Nine of his friends in New York so far that he know, personally know, have died. And I think for a lot of folks, this hasn't set in reality-wise yet because it hasn't personally affected them. But unfortunately, I don't think any of us are going to come out of this unscathed, Mr. Nelson. And the world is never going to be the same. I hug my female surfers. I kiss my female surfers. Those days are gone. We're going to be in a society now where you don't touch, you don't hug, no human contact, you shelter in place. There'll be no more rave concerts and things like Coachella and... um, you know, they have all these different large venues where people go to events. I think I think those days are gone, Mr. Nelson. We're going to basically come. Um, in fact, as I'm speaking to you right now, Mr. Nelson, in the U.K., the biggest horse race is getting ready to go on, and it's all virtual reality. People are online betting on virtual reality. NASCAR, they're getting ready to do NASCAR racing events from simulators. The NASCAR driver is going to get into a computer simulator and pretend like they're on a racetrack driving. That's where this world is headed to. They're fusing the human being with computer. We're we're going to become less and less human as we know each other, where we want to come over and to embrace somebody when it's time to celebrate, to embrace somebody when they need support. That human contact that so many of us need especially at a time like this, that's being taken away. And a lot of it's never coming back, sir. It's never coming back. You, you know, you you told us, uh, at least you told us last year, well, probably before that, uh, the Olympics would be canceled. No, and I told you that in 2016. I came on your show in 2016 because what happened was down here in Huntington Beach, we had the International Surfing Association World Junior Championship. Right. And I came on your show and told the listeners, you know why you folks are sitting here talking about this country and that country? I'm down there on the beach with people from around the world. I was with a surfer from Poland. He was the only one here from Poland. I was with the Russian team. I was with people from China. I was with, we didn't give a damn about politics. These were just young folks wanting to have fun. And a lot of them freaked out because they come to this country and there's no telling what they've heard about the United States. And what I've always made it a point of trying to do is be an ambassador where I try to make everybody feel welcome. So it doesn't take long for them to realize, hey, this is the guy who, he doesn't care where we're from. He doesn't care about any of that. He just wants to see us do well in the contest. And so I came on your show and told you how in 2020 we were going to have Olympics for the first time. I don't know why I say these things. This, this is why they Dick Gregory to tell me, because I'm always saying stuff that later on that comes out to be true, even if I don't want it to be true. But for some reason, I told you in 2016, even though 2020 will be the first year we have surfing in the Olympics, I give it a 60-40 that we're going to have the Olympics. And each year I kept saying less and less. I have, and by the way, Mr. I have surfers from around the world now apologizing to me. I have surf parents contacting me, apologizing to me because they've been calling me crazy and paranoid and conspiratorial because I told them there ain't going to be no Olympics in 2020. So when they announced in March that there was no Olympics in 2020, it's amazing how many surfers had the moral courage to contact me and go, damn, <laughs> we thought you were crazy, man. But, you know, even this quinine thing that's going on, I don't remember saying this until I'm going back to my, oh, because the last time I did a radio show with you, Mr. Nelson, I lost thousands of my photographs and files. 
So now I'm actually going on to Facebook trying to find things I posted in the past to get my photographs back because I've lost so much data, which is why I'm not doing any radio shows with you anymore, but or anybody else for that matter. But I was with one of my surfers last year in January of 2019, and somehow we got on the conversation. I'm talking to her about quinine. Now, as a young child growing up, you know, dirt poor, rural, segregated Johns Island, South Carolina, we didn't go to a doctor. First of all, most of these damn white hospitals wouldn't let us in. But secondly, blacks and Native Americans in the South, you know, <laughs> we did home remedies, okay? Western medicine wasn't a big thing for us. And Mike's grandmother used to always give me quinine. It was in a bottle of 666. I love that number. And um, I was explaining to her, I said, be careful because if you're pregnant, you don't want to be in your first trimester taking anything with quinine because it can cause you to have an abortion. In fact, I, in fact, I was telling the story about how when black slave women were raped, Native Americans and black slaves, they would take quinine so that they wouldn't have this baby for some damn racist slave owner who had raped them. However, if you had a cold or a flu and a high fever, you took that quinine and it would knock it out. Now, I said that to her back in January of 2019. She's from France, by the way. And here comes France in March of 2020 saying they're having remarkable success with a synthetic quinine-based medicine over in France. And several other countries now are saying the same thing. Why, why am I sharing that story? We have gotten so technologically advanced, Mr. Nelson, that it's, it's incumbent. I heard one of your callers earlier saying we need to have the young people come on. And I agree with her because without the young people going on, this, we're not going to survive because we're all getting older. You have to find a way to bring these young people in. But you also have to find those elders out there who knew what it was like before we had integration. Because folks listening to me today, get off your ass and make a decision right now. Are you going to be a survivor or are you going to be a victim? Because some of us who are black have seen things far worse than what we're seeing now and we have survived. That's why I posted on my Sepia Legacy site, social social distance, we used to call that segregation. I, w I would drink out of a damn basin while six feet away from me was the, the public water fountain that I couldn't drink out of. One said white, one said color. So for you black folks that are my age, I'm 62 now, and older, it, this is where you have to start telling these young folks this is what you have to do to survive. Stop whining. Stop complaining. Stop telling all the worst things about it and figure out how the hell did we survive Jim Crow? Okay? Uh, and we can survive right this. <laughs> uh, let's finish on the other side. We've got to take a short break as we're closing on the top of the hour so some of our stations can identify themselves down the line. Stations like 1450, WOL, where information is power. Nelson Show on Washington, D.C.'s 1450 WOL Radio and live around the world on WOLDCnews.com. Before we left, we're speaking with Mark Manheim and, and uh, Dick Gregory. He says he's an early warning system. He says, Dick Gregory used to say, keep that brother close because he, he knows too much. But anyway, Mark, I'm going to let you finish your thought. Then I got a well, question. Well, one of the things that I, I'm hoping that comes out of this, because one of the things I tried to stress on your show when I decided to return to the political airwaves after Trayvon Martin was murdered, it was, time, it was high time, long past due, for us to stop disrespecting our family. This was the time I kept saying for the last, you know, almost 10 years now, it's time for people to start realizing that they're going to need that family when things like what's going on now is happening. It's time to stop putting your personal family business on social media for the other world to see. It's time for you to stop disrespecting your family on social media. So one of the things I really hope that will come out of this is a positivity. Now that so many people are being forced to shelter in place, that we as a family will come together again. Unfortunately, I'm hoping it doesn't happen, but I, I think there's going to be a, a probably a rise in child abuse and domestic violence. 
you know. All right. So, so do you said you had a question for me because I don't want to take up all the time from your listeners. Uh, the Civil War and are we going to have elections? All right, Civil War. It's already going on. You heard you heard Mike Governor yesterday tell you that California now is a nation state. See, I've been warning about the Article Five Confederate confederation that they've been trying to convention they've been trying to have for a long time where really they wanted to take all the power from the federal government trump you folks think trump is an idiot trump is no idiot now he may have his <laughs> he may not be the sharpest guy when it comes to his vernacular or how to articulate he's very devious he's very shrewd and he's very smart and one of the things Trump has been very smart so far is not to put himself in a position where he's going to be impeached by all these libertarians that he's surrounded himself with in his administration. So if you notice how he's responded to this pandemic, he's done little or nothing on the federal level, which has forced the individual state governors to now have to make decisions. And, of course, the last ones to come online will be the red states because they believe just like he are. A lot of those folks, they surround themselves with evangelical uh, apostolics and uh, Pentecostals who really believe this is God's way of cleansing the earth. They're already saved, and if they all die, they don't care because they're going to heaven. I wish I was making this up. I'm not being hyperbolic when I tell you this. And that's why Trump made that idiot statement about returning on Easter because these folks thought they're all going to sit in church on Easter and watch the rapture. Some of them still think they are. Why am I saying this to you? In the meantime, now, you have 50 states and territories that the individual governors are now doing things without direction from the federal government. That right there is setting up the Civil War, Mr. Nelson. You have states, for example, if I was to drive right now from California to Texas, I'd be locked up for 14 days in quarantine. If I was to drive from New Jersey or New, or New York with those license plates into Connecticut, I'd be locked up for 14 days. But where does it say that one state can stop another individual from another state from traveling through without being involuntarily quarantined? That's what's already happening. And now when you hear Newsom come out and tell you, he's just going to basically ignore much of what Trump is saying, because Trump's not giving them any leadership, you have all these different states now all doing their own thing. And when, all, right now, Mr. Nelson, all we need is a severe break in the food chain line. What am I talking about? You got tractor trailers driving across country. These truckers aren't being tested. You got workers in supermarkets who never got treated with respect. All of a sudden now we're looking at them as first responders on the front lines. But they're not being provided with protective material. So if you get enough people who are working in the stores who refuse to go to work because they're not being provided with protective gear, that's going to be a shutdown in your food supply line. And it's going to go off because most people in this country would not make it three days without a supermarket. That's, where, that's how we live today. Okay, they don't have enough food at home for a minimum of seven to day, it's ten days, minimum. That's what I'm saying, minimum. No, they live from day to day. And so we have a severe break in the chain for food supply. It's gone. Two days ago, well, two nights ago, we had uh, somewhere between 150 to 200 inmates in the state of Washington riot in the prison because there's, you know, coronavirus there. A lot of inmates want to be released. Folks, that's just a glimpse of what's coming down. You have to start preparing yourselves because you should have been prepared 10 years ago. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go, Mr. Nelson, as far as the election goes, just look at Wisconsin and saw what happened in Wisconsin. If you want to see what the election is going to be like in November. Okay. And as far as, um, we don't have to have elections anyway, because Trump has the power to suspend the elections. So if he thinks he's going to lose, he can cancel and it's legal. We're under a state of emergency, so he doesn't have to have any elections. But as far as for those of you who are Johnny come lately, and who probably never heard me on this show before, contact me on Facebook at Mark from Anaheim, Political Sarcasm 101. Once again, Mark from Anaheim, Political Sarcasm 101. That's the group site or the fan page because I gave up on closing the group site. That way, you just ask me and I will send you the information that many of Mr. Nelson listeners already have on what you should have at home, in your car, and at your workplace or at school in the event that you have to have survival gear. I posted it on Facebook long before we knew this thing was going to happen. So, Mr. Nelson, most of the questions people are asking me right now, I don't even answer their questions. 
All I do is give them the website of something I posted on Facebook for the last 10 years. Because it's all been out there. If you folks really want to know what's going on, you would already know what's going on. Am I being hard on you? You're damn right I'm being hard on you. You all, you spend more time protecting your children instead of preparing your children. And for those of us who went through segregation, those of us who know what it's like not to be treated as equal in this country, we're the ones who have let down the generations behind us because we didn't prepare them. We wanted to pamper them and protect them for what we went through. I never did. I didn't realize until recently when my daughter was telling some of her white friends, oh, yeah, my dad wouldn't even let me watch a movie if it didn't have a black person in it. That's reality. Okay? Seriously. And, w- and when things get a little bit rough right here, folks, if you think racism was bad before this pandemic, now is when you're going to see. You see, when, when the economy is good, people get along. When things become scarce, that's when people fight dog-eat-dog, fight for survival. And Mr. Nelson right now, we're headed for major dog eat dog because insurance companies are not even honoring the business claims of small businesses because they're claiming you didn't close your business because you had coronavirus. You closed your business because your governor declared a state of emergency. Therefore, your claim is not valid. If they're not even going to honor the claims of small business, Mr. Nelson, how will those businesses ever reopen again? That's where we are right now. Oh, and for you folks out there thinking you're getting a free check, you're going to pay for that check because that's going to be considered earned income on your taxes next year. So just prepare yourselves for all you folks sitting at home talking about, I can make more money sitting at home getting these checks than if I was working. Nothing's free from the federal government. So get in touch with me, Mark from Anaheim, Political Sarcasm 101. I'll send you information to help you all try to weather this as much as possible. Mr. Nelson, I'm sure you wanted to ask me this, so I'm going to finish off with this because God knows everybody keeps asking me about the 5G. What I will say to you is this. Man has been playing God. There's a lot of nanotechnology now in medicine. Nano medicine. I don't know where this virus came from, but it's not one virus, folks. As I'm speaking to you right now, there are no less than 13 different strains of coronavirus out there around the world. What I see from all the research into this, somewhere man interceded with nature and it's gone haywire. Whether it was set off deliberately, whether it was set off accidentally, I don't know. And right now it doesn't really matter. What I will say to you is they don't know what to do about it. And the only way you can control this is to find out the larger areas that have a major population of it and try to cordon those areas off. As far as black folks, in Italy, the reason you had so many old people die in Italy is because the average age in Italy is 48 years old. In Europe, when they started running out of ventilators and respirators, they just decided if you were 80 or older, You don't get a respirator ventilator. That's why there were so many older people dying. People in this country didn't do the research like I do, so they just assume young people can't get it. Well, that's a bunch of crap, folks. It doesn't matter if you're black, white, brown, yellow, green. If you have pre-existing conditions like asthma, diabetes, high blood pressure, you are more susceptible if you end up contracting this strain of coronavirus. So for all those people out there who've been telling you for like the last two months, well, black people can't get it, I'm sorry you even wasted your time listening to those kind of people. That's why I haven't been doing any radio shows, because I don't even want to waste my time with that kind of stuff. There's nothing I share on this radio station that you can't find on your own if you wanted to find the research instead of wasting all your time looking for a conspiracy theory. The conspiracy theories is out. What you need to do is figure out how you're going to survive. Be a survivor not a victim, and I'm Mr. Nelson. I hope what I've shared today will help some of the folks who are listening. I'm out of here. All right. Thanks, Mark. we got to take a short break. 800-450-7876. Your calls are next on 1450 WOL, where information is power.